Let's say you walk up to a friend and say, I'm a Mac gamer. Chances are they would hysterically laugh at you or give you a nasty uppercut. Now, I'm just exaggerating on the last point, but let's discuss this. Why does Mac gaming get so much hate? This video is not stating that Mac is the best platform for gaming because let's be honest, it's not. It's lagging behind. It's really not as bad as everyone claims, but there are some issues here and there. Many believe that Macs don't have any games, or the ones they have are just plain right awful. This is absolutely not the case. Mac computers have seen great AAA and indie titles during its lifetime. In fact, Steam has now reached over 4,000 games available for Mac OS. Here, a little token of my respect. Keep this up and there's a lot more. And the Mac App Store now features a wider catalogue of amazing games. Some recent notable mentions are Civilization VI, Mad Max, Smite, XCOM 2, Firewatch, Rocket League, and the list goes on. Most of the best Windows PC games are available on Mac, and it turns out that 8 out of the 10 most played games on Steam have a Mac version, and all of the best indies support the Mac too. The fact is guys, most of the time people don't even know that Macs have games, you just have to dig a little. Just like at the Apple special event in October 2016, if you dig a little, you can spot Phil playing Civilization 6 on his new MacBook Pro. It was a long time ago that Apple decided on producing thin desktop PCs and thin and portable laptops with long battery life. This is fine if you want to take your MacBook with you, but it impacts on people who want to play games on their Mac. This problem has irritated tons of gamers. Why is this? Because thinner Macs will end up requiring power sacrifices. And do you know what the first victim is? That's right, the graphics card, the most vital part for gaming. The average Mac has integrated graphics cards now, which is great for power consumption, but are worse than dedicated graphics cards. So obviously, with all these problems, Macs can't handle gaming, right? Once again, this just isn't the case. Now yes, some Mac computers can't handle gaming at an acceptable level, but it really depends on which Mac model you have and which year it was released. Let's say you're gaming on a 5K iMac or a recent MacBook Pro, you should generally have no problems. Let's take Mac Game HQ's website page, Can I Run It, as an example. This page shows a database of games running on macOS using their application CountIt, a live frame rate counter for Mac. A late 2013 27-inch iMac can run Alien Isolation at high settings, a resolution of 2560 by 1440, and an average frame rate of 48 FPS. And a mid 2015 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro can run Shadow of Mordor at high settings, a resolution of 1440 by 900, and an average frame rate of 24 FPS. This isn't remarkable, but it is absolutely doable for gaming. Be sure to check out this page in the video description for more results. But let's say for example you're gaming on a MacBook Air, Mac Mini, or an older Mac model. Chances are, gaming might have some complications. In recent years, Apple has moved towards a controversial closed architecture design. This means there are no options to customize the inside of your Macintosh computer, unless you pre-order online. The only upgradable Macs are now the iMac series and the Mac Pros. The iMac series is customizable via RAM upgrades, which can be changed via the RAM access door on the back of the machine. On the other hand, the Mac Pro is CPU upgradable, SSD upgradable, RAM upgradable, and I think the GPU is possibly upgradable. Don't count me on that. There are many who disagree with Apple's design on how you cannot customize most Macs. But I found that everything just works, as you don't have to worry about purchasing extra compartments. 
Now let's be honest, without a doubt, everyone hates how Apple computers are so expensive. But I've always found they are cheaper in the long run, as their lifespan is sometimes significantly longer than their Windows counterpart. So, Apple has never built a gaming Mac. In fact, I never think they will. I don't know about you, but this is something that I desperately want and need. A vast majority wish Apple would listen to us and create an awesome gaming PC. However, these days, Apple is a company that creates products that can multitask. Whether this be for gaming, video and photography editing, word processing, or basic computer tasks. So let's say you just bought a Mac and discovered there is no right click. You might be thinking, what the hell was Apple thinking? Who the fuck do you think you are, huh? How can I possibly aim my gun in Sleeping Dogs without a right click? This issue has irritated countless people, even myself. But many don't even know that you can easily right click by going to system settings and enabling it. Now why Apple releases their computers with no right click enabled is beyond me. Frankly, it is ludicrous on their part. But the fact is, you can right click. You just have to enable it. Another issue is the fact that when you game, you can't right and left click at the same time with the magic mouse. Some games avoid this issue by using Alt as a right click, but this still isn't ideal for gaming. But also, the mouse has no middle button. This is such a huge problem for gaming on macOS, so often you'll need to get a separate mouse. I really hope Apple releases a new mouse that is more friendly with gaming. And don't even get me started on the magic trackpad. Ugh. I'm going to end this video by sharing with you guys something that really upsets myself and many others on Apple's behalf. Recently, more than ever, Mac computers have never felt so abandoned by Apple, which has greatly impacted on Mac gaming. Now look, I understand that they make a titanic profit from their iOS devices, but a plentiful of people dislike how they have appeared to stop caring about their Macintosh computers. I mean, they haven't updated the Mac Pro since 2013. At the 2015 WWDC, Apple announced Metal for macOS. And that brings us to Metal. Which is a set of 3D tools that should optimize GPU usage and maximize the graphics potential of your Mac. Metal sounded like a dream for gamers, but also for developers creating titles for macOS. This was something that could bring Mac gaming to a fresh and whole new level. A year has gone by and not even a handful of games support Metal. Two games that do support it are World of Warcraft and the upcoming Mac game Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Sorry, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. In fact, World of Warcraft is said to be 61% faster using Metal. This is really impressive, but World of Warcraft is 12 years old now and it would be nicer for Metal to support newer games. When Metal finally utilizes more games on Mac, it will open more possibilities than Apple's outdated engine OpenGL ever could. It will also hopefully bring more and better games to Mac. Though this may seem disconcerting, there is still some good news. With all this not so appealing news, you might be thinking that games will soon stop coming to Mac. But the truth is guys, now more than ever, huge titles are coming to Mac. And developers are starting to realize that people also love to game on Mac computers. My verdict for the future of Apple is still looking bright. I have faith that they will prove us wrong in the future, bringing out new Macs that are more friendly with gaming. Do you guys enjoy gaming on Mac or do you just hate the idea? I can't believe I'm going to leave this planet as a pile of bear shit. Thank you, Henry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, let me know if I missed something important in this video. Let's have a conversation down in the comments, guys. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave a like, and if you're new, why not subscribe? 
I post weekly videos about Mac gaming that can really help new and even old gamers to the Mac platform. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel.